Joining me now, Raghuram Rajan is professor of finance at the University of Chicago's Booth School and former governor of the Reserve Bank of India. And Tom Honig is distinguished senior fellow at George Mason's Mercatus Center and the former president of the Kansas City Fed. Welcome to you both. It's kind of um, delicious irony having you on together as well, because Raghu, if I'm not mistaken, it was at the Kansas City Jackson Hole Conference, where in 2007, as everyone was kind of talking happy uh, about the economy, you issued this warning that was quite prophetic at the time. And I'm curious if you have any warnings to issue now or if you think we're going to come through this just fine. Well, first, uh, it was 2005, but but it's, wow. uh, you know, uh, it's it's hard to, uh, you know, it's hard to get things right all the time. So uh, I, I don't have any uh, sense that I will be prescient. I think it's it's important to worry about a number of things all the time. And, and certainly, uh, obviously, we're worrying about inflation. We're worrying about risks in the financial sector. We seem to have calmed them with uh, the actions in March, but they were pretty significant actions. We effectively insured all uninsured demand deposits. That's that's a huge action. And of course, you just mentioned the fiscal deficit, which has gone from four to north of seven percent in the course of one year, which is a huge expansion for what one might think of as a normal year, as a peacetime year. You haven't seen these big expansions uh, in the last so many years, except perhaps in 2009 and 2020, which were both extraordinary years. Right, and it, for, I, I'm trying to think, do I call you professor, vice chair, president? Uh, you're, you. you're high. <laughs> and for Tom Honig, as I turn to you, sir, you know, I, I thought it was quite interesting that you recently said, as, as people were concerned about what happened in March, that banks in some ways took the bait and took all the treasuries that they were encouraged to do through, uh, you know, the way our system works and are, are left with these losses. Um, so we started with concerns about the banks. But six months later, all of a sudden, it's it's really the sustainability of the U.S. fiscal position that it seems could be much more worrisome. Well, I think that's right. Number one, though, on the securities that the banking industry hold, the, the Fed set up a, a facility. They're taking the, the securities and lending against them at par value, even though they may be uh, well below their par value uh, uh, numbers. And so they've, they've kind of alleviated that part of the crisis. But I think the real issue is the Fed has decided uh, wisely, I think, to uh, end quantitative easing and begin to at least hold their balance sheet constant and, re and reduce it. And in that environment, where you have the, the, the government issuing substantial amounts of new debt uh, every month, uh, we have a huge deficit over 1.7 trillion, probably growing, uh, and you don't have the Federal Reserve buying that debt uh, any longer. That means the private sector or foreign interests have to buy all that debt. And that's why I think you see interest rates along the yield curve pushing up, the 10-year up, and I think you're going to see more of that because this debt has to be financed. And if the Fed isn't going to take it, uh, the private sector will demand more of a return for the for the risk they're taking the, the, uh, as they go forward. And, and I think that's very important to keep in mind. And that factor, uh, I think, is a warning sign for the future of the economy. We've had a really good growth period, but now we have uh, all this fiscal expansion coming to uh, hopefully an end. Uh, and now the the higher interest rates, I think there's a lot of pressure coming forward uh, on the economy and on the Fed because they'll be pressured to uh, reverse their quantitative tightening if things start to slow uh, very much. Right. And, Rag, you know, today we sit here and, and stocks are higher and earnings look decent and we think, OK, it's the economy. That's why bond yields are moving higher. Do you think that's why they're moving higher or do you think that it has to do with the deficit picture? Well, I think it has to do first with what uh, uh, Tom just said, that uh, the, the buyers are simply not there as they were before. The Fed is out of the picture of foreign buyers. Japan is slowly backing off from buying treasuries, and China stopped some time back. So, so there is a concern uh, of who is going to buy these long-term treasuries. Also, uh, certainly the Treasury has to issue a lot more paper to fund a much larger deficit than last year, especially because tax uh, intake hasn't been strong this year. Uh, and the second, I, I think, most uh, worrisome aspect is the Treasury also has to issue longer term. Uh, who is going to buy this duration? And that's partly why uh, interest rates are moving up at the longer end. Last point, uh, as the Fed takes longer to quell uh, this bout of inflation, as it stays higher,
higher for longer, clearly even longer term rates have to be yet longer to give people the reason to buy them, to, to give them the uh, necessary uh, premium. And so all this is pushing up rates at the long end. And of course, we'll uh, act to slow down the economy. That's what the Fed wants, but it's not something the ordinary person likes.